Hey guys, today working on a 2004 uh, Volkswagen Jetta. A uh, customer was saying that the alarm goes off randomly, of course, in the middle of the night. Uh, you know, the neighbors are complaining because the horn is deep and stuff like that. Um, this one in particular, uh, with the Volkswagens, I have a diagnostic tool called VAGCOM. Uh, it's pretty much exactly just like what the dealership uses. Uh, I could see all the different um, control modules, all the faults, stuff like that. So um, if you're lucky enough to have this sort of uh, scan tool or if you're looking to get one uh, for your own car, I highly recommend it. Um, you know, you can change different things in the modules, coding, you know, doors opening at certain points, uh, uh, locks, stuff like that. So I'm gonna walk you through, show you how we figured out what the module is that's bad in this, and I'll walk you through the procedure to fix it. So, right now, I'm in the um, comfort and convenience screen, and from here, I'm gonna go into faults, and you can see I have two faults. Both of them are intermittent, uh, front driver's side module and the rear left module. Both say intermittent, um, but I know for a fact if I try to lock the door, I get nothing out of the, the driver's side door lock. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go to measure values, and we're gonna go to measure block 10. Now this will show me all the states um, for all the doors here. Now if I go to open up, let's say the passenger door, so I get a door open signal. But if I go to open the driver's side, get nothing. Door closed, no matter. It's open, closed. So that's the problem. There's a little micro switch inside the door lock actuator that goes bad. And then the car doesn't recognize that the door is open, the door is closed. Sometimes it makes contact, sometimes it doesn't. And if you have the alarm on and all of a sudden it reads open, that's what triggers the alarm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna replace the whole door lock module. To do that, we have to take the driver's side door card off. We have to remove the inner panel, which is part of the window regulator. So we have to push the window up. I'll show you guys how to do that. And finally, we're gonna change the lock actuator. So stick, stay tuned. Before we get to that, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave me a comment below, and uh, let me know if there's any other videos you guys would like to see. Okay guys, to remove the driver's side door uh, card, it's pretty simple. There's a screw in the top corner there. You have two torque screws down below, and then you gotta remove the switch panel. To get the switch panel off, you gotta pull this inner uh, piece of trim out and then the whole switch panel comes up and there's three Phillips screws behind this panel. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this off. Okay, here we are. Door card's off. Now we have the regulator panel. Um, Lock actuator is here, so we need to get the regulator panel off. Uh, in order to do so, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna put the switch panel back on, key on, and then through these two holes, you'll see brackets right up there. Two brackets that clamp onto the window glass. It's part of the regulator. You gotta be really careful. Um, you're taking these off. These are actually updated sets. Uh, the originals were like a mix of plastic and sheet metal that would break. Um, so these look like T30 Torx bolts. We're going to loosen these up and then we're going to take the perimeter 10 millimeter bolts off of this. The rest of the electrical connections. Um, what I like to do so everything goes back on nicely is once the panel's off from the inside I can get to these uh, like plastic wire loom holders uh, to actually you know, push the locks in and push them out so I can reuse them. That way the wire's not all hanging, uh, hanging down, looks looks crappy and such. So, uh, the next step, I'll, I'll try to get a shot of that and uh, take it from there. Okay guys, here we have it. 
the old lock actuator, new lock actuator. I've already transferred over the uh, lock rod and the cable that goes to the inside pull handle. The only other one I have to move now is the out uh, outer door lock cable. It's going to go onto here. And actually, real quick, I'm going to show you uh, how to get that off. Now, the trick to this, you got to remove the lock itself. And the lock is in here like that. On the side, there's a little hole. And if you look inside there, see a little Torx bolt? What you do is you take your T25 screwdriver, you pull the handle out, get some pressure on here, and with your Torx driver, back this out. What it's going to do is it's going to leave it so the handle is out like this. You'll be able to slide out the lock, and then on the side here, see those little serrations there? That's where that cable latches into. Uh, you might want to take note where it's positioned, um, because moving it in or out will actually change uh, how soon, when you pull this, will open up the door. So you don't want it too tight that the door will just open up when you hit a bump or something. You don't want it too loose that it doesn't release it. So just take note of where that is. Once you have all those cables and the electrical connection off, it's just your two triple square bolts on the side and the whole lock actuator comes out. So go ahead and switch over all the cables, the lock rod, and we're gonna put it back into place. I wanted to show you guys the clips that hold the wire on. So if you look closely, let's see if we can get this to focus. These are the tabs on the side that you wanna to try to pinch um, and then these things will pull right out without destroying them. If you try to use like a pry tool or something, you're just going to break them. The wire is just going to be dangling in there. You'll leave the rattles and stuff. So just take your time. Uh, drop the regulator panel down and you should be able to get all these off. Nice and clean like. That way they'll snap right back in. No issues at all. Another quick thing I wanted to mention. Again, with these window clips. Uh, you don't want to over tighten these. You over tighten these, especially if there's any kind of dirt in between them, you're gonna shatter the glass. The last thing you wanna do from an easy job like this is have that glass shatter. So these only need to be snugged down. When I say snugged, I mean, you know, sort of clamped tight, but not too tight. Don't go ahead and use a ratchet, you know, three feet long kind of thing. Just get them snugged down. I use just a regular uh, T30, uh, you know, screwdriver and I'm just gonna snug these down make sure the channels are clean uh, before you push the glass into place and then once the glass is set down into them make sure it's shifted into the back track everything straight and even snug them up and I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna put all the perimeter bolts back on for this window regulator I already got the wires put back on uh, I'm gonna cover this one up the other side's missing and we're gonna get this door card back on and then last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test out that electrical connection with the door regulator. I mean, test out the electrical connection with the lock actuator and make sure that we're seeing this door open and close now. Okay guys, door's all back together. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go to fault codes. You see I can, I've already cleared it out, but go down, clear codes. Yes, erase them. We're gonna go back. And we're going to check our measure value again. Measure block 10. Door closed. We're going to open the driver's door. Now see it shows door open. Door closed. Everything's good. The last thing you might want to do is like a basic settings for the, for the auto drop window. But what you do is you just bring the window all the way up. All the way down. You got to hold the switch the whole time. I usually do it at least once up and down. And then when you hit the switch, you get your auto drop again. Do it again, you get your auto up. So that just sets the basic settings for that. So guys, I hope you like this video. See, it's pretty simple when you have the right scan tool to uh, you know, at least show you where the problem is, help you identify it a little easier. 
Um, I think that other fault I had for the rear door was just sort of a fluke. Uh, but I did want to mention one of the things that's very common in these cars is the wiring inside uh, the door jam. So up by the A-pillar on the front door, uh, I mean for any door for that matter. Um, usually with that though, you'll see more than just like I had for uh, a door lock actuator not working. You'll see something like uh, the speaker open circuit or the window switch, um, the mirror adjustment, you know, it'll be a couple of different faults. It's usually more than one wire breaks or it breaks the wire that goes to the um, window motor, which is also a control module. And then you'll see all those other faults. So, you know, it's, it's easy enough to pull the boot back, make sure none of the wires are broken. Um, you know, so you're not just changing parts for no reason because you know, this, this lock actuator is anywhere between $130 and $300, depending on where you get it from, if you go in an OEM part. Um, and if it's something that you just need to re-splice together the wires, you're talking about a couple of dollars at most. So, um, you know, just just do your, your, your research, do your checks, make sure everything's good, because uh, you just don't want for parts like this. So I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave me a comment below, and I'll see you guys next time.